Shalom family, welcome back. This is Brother Maurice. We're going to continue with the last and final part, part number 17, the truth about Moses, Aaron, the Levites, and the Levitical priesthood. So we've seen the wickedness that they've done. We've seen the wickedness uh, that Ezra did. We also see the wickedness of Solomon. We see the things that Saul done. We've seen the things that Samuel did. So much wickedness. But what did the father say? In the last reading that we said, that we, that we talked about, he says that he instructed Malachi and he wrote my words of hope. So there are a couple things that were in Malachi. I want to read one thing out of the restored version of Malachi chapter 3, verse number 3. And it says, and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and of gold and with fervent and with fervent heat shall the elements of the earth be refined, even the gold and silver filled with dross. He's talking about the people. Listen to this. Listen to the love of the Father here. And it says, And he shall purify the sons of Levi, who have corrupted the people and led them astray, filling them with dross. You see, even all the wickedness that was done by Levi, what did the Father say? He's still going to purify them. It's the same thing that's taking place right now. Slowly, the world, their eyes are going to be open. And eventually, the world will be purified. Eventually. But everyone's going to have to come to this awakening on their own. One by one. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, who have corrupted the people. And led them astray, filling them with dross. And he shall purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. For behold, all their offerings they have polluted, and there are none who are pure. But they shall know at that day that they might cast out the evil from among them. And then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as it was in former years before the sons of Levi corrupted it. Now let's go back to the book of remembrance of Moses in Moses chapter 13 and listen what is said here. Verse number 38. And Malachi said, Then they that revered the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before them for them that revered or loved the Lord and that thought upon his name. These things that I've been reading from are from the books of rem remembrance. And the Father had these books of remembrance written for those that love him, those that wanted to find the truth, those that wanted to love people and follow the Father's law of love. And he says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Now, family, let's go to the restored version of Malachi chapter 3, verse number 16. Because you need to know why we read from these books and the importance of these books. Because you got to learn who the character of the Father is. Because today, the whole world is worshiping and following after Satan. Even though they have this Bible in their hand, they don't know the difference between the Father and Satan. Malachi 3, verse 16. In those days there shall be they that fear the Lord and keep his commandments. And he shall speak often one to another. And they shall have it given unto them to judge between good and evil, making a righteous judgment in the works that they do. And the Lord shall hearken and hear them. And a book of remembrance shall be written before him for them that fear the Lord and receive his name in their foreheads. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. Yea, 
even when I shall purge the dross from my gold and my silver, and the heat of my furnace will not burn them up. For I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son, who serveth him, and receiveth a just wage in his fire. Then shall the wicked return, and discern for themselves between the righteous and the wicked, between the righteous and the wicked works which they have done. Then shall they all know the difference between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. We still have a little bit more time left. Let's take a look quickly at David and Goliath. Because you should know the, tr the truth about this too, family. The book of remembrance of Moses chapter 13, verse number 39. And this reading is clearly indicating that Israel can come to know who our father Anokasid is and how to discern the truth about him. And now the Lord is going to tell us the truth about Solomon and his accounts of his father David. And we are all aware of how David is always associated with righteousness. Even King is compared to him. And, Mas and Moza, which is Christ, said of David, while he walked in the flesh, that David was righteous. But Solomon crafted many lies about his father so he could set in place his new definitions of Israel and its purpose as a nation. And the Lord said, David never armed himself. He was righteous. Or that is to say, David had the right relationship with the covenants of his father, especially the covenant of Abraham. And when David, as a shepherd boy, went out to face Goliath, these listen to this now. When he went to go face Goliath, let's see what happens. They offered him a sword. And he said, know you not that I follow the covenant of Abraham? Give me no sword, for the Lord will deliver me. And he has done for things much more frightful than this great gawking Philistine. And David was a slinger. And he ran forward towards Goliath, and he slung his stone in a manner of an experienced slinger. And Goliath fell down to the ground. And those behind David called out, kill him, kill him. But David would not. He would not take the life with a sword. And the Philistines carried Goliath away. And ever after, Goliath was troubled of mind with demons a fanciful threats, and the Philistines considered his fate to be worse than death. And you will see that David went and dwelt in Gath. Do you hear this? David dwelt in Gath where Goliath lived, and he was only allowed to do so because he did not take up arms. So we're going to stop there, family. But what we've seen, we've cleared up a whole lot of things. The father said that he's a loving God. But guess what? Now we can believe it. Now we can see it. Because we can see all the acts of cruelty that took place were all based on lies. You got to read these books of remembrance, family. It's going to show you the love of our father. It's going to change the way that you think about things. So family, I love you. I pray you're able to get through all of these videos so that you can understand the truth. Love you, family. Shalom, shalom.